Baruchim Abayim, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the young Israel of Kew Garden Hills, where tonight the community once again unites in unison, Sfarim Ashkenazim, men, women, young, old, everyone, together. We're going to start off the evening by calling upon Harav Aram Nisanian, the Rabbi of Congregation Shari Tova, to read the first capital of Tehillim on the list, on the sheet that we all gave out. We're going to ask for everyone to please rise. Shir Lamalo Tesainai Leari Menayin Yabo Ezri Shir Lamalo Tesainai Leari Menayin Yabo Ezri Ezri Meim Adonai Ose Shamayim Baaret Shir Lamalo Tesainai Leari Menayin Yabo Ezri Aditen Lamot Raglecha Al Yanum Shomerecha Baruch Hashem, last week in Yeshiva Zorah Chaim, the place was packed, people davening, pouring out their hearts, and unfortunately, the kids are still not back. Rabbi Newman, God bless him, from Chickens for Shabbos, calls, you need, we got to do something else. They're still not back. This time, we're going we're gonna to do tefillah, but the focus should be Divri Torah. His sorrows. We should be inspired to take something upon ourselves. Where it's Hashem, maybe that will bring them back. And that's why we're here tonight. We'd like to call upon the president of the Youngers of Kugar and Hills to say words of welcome. Mr. David Rice, please. Thank you. Uh, before we start, I'd like to remind everyone to turn off their cell phones. Um, and if there's any men standing in the back, this side of the uh, shul is designated for men this evening. My father always used to say, when you have two Jews, you have three opinions. And never in my life did I think that I would ever see a situation where it's the opposite. Two Jews, one opinion. That's what we have here. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Brother Rabbanim and uh, our elected officials, Rabbi, Rabbi Yoel will acknowledge them. Um, and uh, we have to just keep this up. If this is one thing good comes out of all this, it's the fact that we can get together all denominations, all different Ashkenaz, Svar, all that, and it's, it's really a, uh, a real positive thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Mr. David Reich. We're going to be asking from the Mara de Astra, the rub of the shul, a rub Yoel Schoenfeld, to please come and say introductory remarks, and uh, that, that way he'll introduce uh, our guest speaker, the renowned Moa author and lecturer of Pesach. From Rabbi Yoel Schoenfeld, please rise. Please be seated. Shusavi Mari. At the outset, I'd 
I'd like to mention that I received a call from Rabbi Grunblatt, Rosh Hashiva, Yeshiva Chafetz Chaim, who apologized for the fact that he and Rabbi Harris, both the Rosh Hashiva and that Yeshiva, will not be able to be here tonight. They have a, a, a each one has a separate chasana for Talmidim of the Yeshiva, so their apologies. We are gratified that the Rabbanim who have joined us are here and we take note of the elected officials that have joined us and I will mention those who I've, I've noted in the audience. Um, if there are others, please let me know before this evening ends so that we can acknowledge their presence as well. Our Councilman uh, Rory Lansman and uh, of course uh, our State Assemblyman uh, Mike Samanowitz and David Weprin, who was also, I've met him recently at, at a, at a uh, well, at a Saturday occasion this morning for Fred, uh, Fred Halberstadt and told me he would be here this evening, and we always know we can count on him. I'd like to express thanks to Chazak, and you just saw Yaniv, an incredible young man. We're not here to give a testimonial for him, but the Chazak does so much for this community. Uh, in terms of lectures, Habatsa Satara, anything that has to be done on a moment's notice, we can call a Chazak, or with a lot of prep work, we can call a Chazak. Chickens for Shabbos with the indefatigable Robbie Newman, uh, who put this together. This is one of these events that's not a fundraiser, but these are both very, very worthwhile uh, institutions, and if you ever do find it, the moment to take some time to, first of all, give them the chizik that they can use in, in the work that they do, and uh, anything you give to either of these organizations at any time goes to extremely worthy programs. I don't have to elaborate. We thank Rabbi Pesach Krohn, very familiar to us in many different ways, as an old friend, neighbor in Kew, in Kew Gardens, a moil who is probably the, is probably the most popular moil that we have here, and um, Rabbi Krohn has also been known to us, especially lately, in our own shul, not talking about throughout the world, but in our own shul, as one of those wonderful Magidim that we also walk away inspired. Rabbi Krohn has given up his time, his talents, um, to be here this evening, and uh, we, we, we definitely appreciate uh, his devotion to this very, very important cause and issue. We have to say, my nama manadaber. Been asked why I haven't written on this in a local paper. I really don't have anything to say. I can't say. I'm not Yirmiyo Anavi. I can't put my words into, into writing. I can't reduce them to writing. So, but I know that we can count on Rabbi Krohn, who can so eloquently call upon his vast resources of whatever it is to put together an aspiring drasha to put it the occasion in the context to which it does have to be put. I'd like also to acknowledge the uh, fact that this morning there was a, we couldn't attend because of various conflicts, but there was a gathering today of elected officials, some of whom we mentioned before, uh, as a press conference put together by Chazak on Main Street, and um, we are very appreciative of the uh, involvement of our local elected officials. We have to take note of our Congresswoman Grace Maine. I'm sure you've seen that picture of her in the Queen's Jewish Link, sitting with her art scroll sitter and uh, saying to Hillam last week in Yeshiva Arachayim, it was really something to behold. Sometimes we have to take a lead from other people outside our own faith. Senator Cruz of, uh, of Texas, you may have seen the the uh, YouTube or the clip on uh, that's going around is an impassioned speech from the Senate floor calling upon action for these three young men. I just uh, beg of you to go see, see to tonight that you, when you come home, Google uh, Senator Tom, is it, uh, Ted Cruz of Texas and the three kidnapped boys, I'm sure it'll come up. An amazing speech it was. That only underscores the fact that it's very hurtful, very hurtful, that some of our own Jewish elected officials are AWOL. And I will mention one by name, and I don't mean to get political here, because this is the last thing we want to do is introduce any politics, but it's important that we motivate him to action, and that is the Shomer Yisrael, as he calls himself, 
our good Senator Charles Schumer. If you look on his website, I can't even find a I can't find a press release. I called up the office. Where is the senator? He, all of a sudden, he can't find the microphone. And they said, well, press this button, that button, and the other button, and he issued a statement. It took me about four maneuvers till I found what he, they were talking about. I implore you to please call the senator's office and say, Ted Cruz gave a speech from the Senate floor, a non-Jew, a Gentile gave such an inspiring speech from the Senate floor. Where are you, the Jewish senator from Brooklyn and from New York, to say a few words? The office numbers in Washington are 202, area code 228-3027. That's 202-228-3027. And in New York City, his, uh, his office number is 212-486-4430. 212-486-4430, or just Google um, Charles Schumer and you'll, you, the information will come up. This is not for the purposes of, of taking political sides. It is the purpose of getting things done in this critical issue. And we can use all the help we can get. We'd like to get some help from our friends. I'm going to read just a first and last paragraph or so from a letter that we received from uh, Danny Danone. He is the uh, Deputy Minister of Defense for the State of Israel. And uh, I'll read the first two paragraphs and his closing paragraph. Dear friends, I was pleased to hear that your community is holding a special event in honor of three Israeli high school students who have been abducted by Hamas terrorists. As you all know, Ayal Yifrach, Gilad Shahar, and Aftali Frankel left their yeshiva in Karatzion more than two weeks ago, and we have not heard from them since. These young men were on their way uh, home to spend Shabbat with their families after finishing their studies for the week. And then I run to this conclusion. Thank you for the unconditional support that you show to Am Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. Please continue to pray for the speedy release of the boys, and may we all hear the Suros Tavos in the very near future. Sincerely, Dani Dano. At this point, uh, it is my pleasure, honor. I wish I could say it's my pleasure. Uh, it's my duty to call upon uh, Pesach, Rabbi Pesach Krohn. I would say it was my pleasure, it was for a happy occasion. Mitz Hashem, Rabbi Pesach, maybe next week we'll call on you again to celebrate together. But at this time, we call upon Rabbi Pesach Krohn. It's a great honor and a great responsibility to have been called by Rabbi Fabian Schoenfeld, by Yanev Meirov, by Rabbi Yoel Schoenfeld, and the community to come to speak tonight. We stand here tonight, each of us holding our breath. Every one of us davens and hopes for the best, but fears the worst. This morning, in Hallel, we all said a posik. The first part of the Pesach applies to each and every one of us. Hopefully, in Mitzvah Hashem, the second part of the Pesach will apply as well. David HaMelech cried out, Min HaMeitzar Karasiya. From a place of confinement, from a place of constriction, from a place of distress, Min HaMeitzar Karasiya. I've called out to Hashem. David HaMelech was answered, and the second part of the Pesach, hopefully, will be able to see it. Anani, Hashem, you answered me. Bamerchavko. You answered me in a place of expansion, an a place of freedom, and a place where people can move and be free. But we cry out, Minamitzar Korosiko. All over the world, all over the Yiddish world, little children, before they say the Birchas Hashachar, and we should do it as well. We have a new taich now in a bracha that we say every morning. Baruch atah Hashem alekeinu melecho ilam matir asurim. Normally the real taich of matir asurim is, as Rav Schwab explains in his Sefer, Rav Schwab on prayer, at night when a person is sleeping, he has no control of his bodily movements. We are tied in a sense because we're in a slumber, we're asleep. And then in the morning when we wake up, the Rabbani Shalom allows us, he unties us in a sense. We can walk, we can talk, we can move around. That's the simple meaning that a person should have in mind, Matir Asurim. 
But now, in yeshivas and Beis Yaakovs and day schools all over, they tell the children, have a new kavona. And that's the kavona we should have tomorrow when we say the bracha. Underline it in your siddur. Mati rasurim, the Abisha should release those that are tied. Later tonight, we will say Tehillim together. And we will cry out some of the most moving psukim that David HaMelech ever wrote. In Perik Kufman Beis, Koili El Hashem Ezok. I cry out with my voice to you, Hashem. Koili El Hashem Eschanon. I plead to you, Hashem. Eshboich Lefon of Sichi. I pour out to you my words. Tsarosi, my distress. Lefon of Agid. I tell it to you. Yidin all over have been davening in such a way that we've seen Achdus, as Rabbi El mentioned. Last Friday night, not this past Friday night, a week before I was in Zurich, I had the schuz to meet Rabbi Schoenfeld's son, Agera Chassid, if you can believe it. <laughs> the davening in the Erika Shul, absolutely incredible. The Erika Shul is called that way, it's called Agudas Achim, but it's known as the Erika Shul because it's on Erika Strasse. Most of them were in Shreimlach, in Kapotes, and after Mincha, before Kabbalah Shabbos, one of the Gaboyim got up and said, we are now going to say Tillim to the three in Eretz Yisrael. Now I guarantee you three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I don't know how many of those fellows in Shreimlach or those fellows in Kapotes would even have looked at these three kids, Gilad, Naftali, and Ayal. But the tilip that was that night was so powerful, you would have thought it was their own children. I was crying watching these guys say tilip. Yidin with beards and bayis and strimach, davening, fa'achenu b'nei Yisrael, naftali, ayal, and gilad. It was absolutely incredible, the achtos that was shown as it has been shown all over. Many of you have certainly heard about this, but I know that this is on video and surely there's some people out there that didn't hear about it. And it says a great deal. Nobody here admires Yair Lapid. Obviously he has hurt from people in a terrible way. But even he understood and he said to one of the families that when he realized what happened, he said he hasn't been in a shul since his son's bar mitzvah. He hasn't davened in years. But yet, when he heard what happened to these three boys, Gilad, Naftali, and Ayal, he searched his house up and down until he was able to find his grandfather's sitter. And he davened. So everybody is davening. And there is great aftos all over the world. But if you don't mind my saying so, I don't believe that that's where the focus should be. Everybody is writing about it. Because it's incredible. Look at this crowd tonight. Every type of Yid in Queens is here. But in my humble opinion, that is not what we should be focusing on. Of course, it's a wonderful byproduct, and we should always keep it up, Mitashem, after the successful arrival of these three, Hele Gechinda. But I believe that there's a different focus altogether. We are all Maminim, B'nai Maminim. We all believe that every success and every pain that we have is God-ordained. Nothing happens without the Rabbani Shalalam orchestrating every success that we have and every pain that we have. But there's a posik, a frightening posik, in Vayikra Chavav and Parshis B'chukaisai Chav Gimel Chav Dalet. Let's listen to the posik. And you will mamish be stunned what the Arachayim says on this passage. The Torah is telling us what happens if Yidin are going along and we're having Tzoros. The Tzoros never seems to end. You open up every Yiddish newspaper, illness, financial troubles, death of young people, it doesn't stop. Zot the Pasek, the Im and even if after all these things happen, you have not become disciplined to become the perfect Yid. 
and you are treating me, Hashem says, casually, you do the mitzvahs you like to do. But don't mitzvahs that you don't feel like doing, you don't do it. So your observance as a yid is casual. V'halachnim imi keri. Hashem answers, if that's how you're going to treat me, casually, you're going to do the mitzvahs that you like to do, but those that you don't like to do, you're not going to be involved in. V'halachti af ani imochem bekeri. I will also treat you casually. And you know what the Rambam and Hilchas Titus said something to us frightening. He says every little thing that happens, every pain, every tsar that we feel, we have to understand that it just didn't happen. Terrorists, what do you expect from terrorists? Of course they're going to kidnap some kids. Eventually they'll get yeshiva kids. It happens. Okay, so we'll dive in. We'll get together, we'll cry, we'll have a chinos. But what does it affect me? What connection does it have to me? Well, we feel bad for the three families, of course. And we feel bad for everybody, and we're davening, and we're hoping for the best. What's it got to do with me personally? The Rambam says, anybody who says that, he says a very frightening Russian, Harezu derech achzoriyas. That's cruelty. You're being cruel to yourself when you think that way. That it has nothing to do with me. What does it have to do with the kids who are in the gush? What's it got to do with Kew Garden Hills? What's it got to do with America? What's it got to do with Switzerland? And he says, Vigoyremes, Lohem lihidoveg v'maseyem aroyim. Obviously, Hashem has a taina on us. Because if any one of us feels bad and loses sleep and governs with pain, we are being given, in a sense, a certain wake-up call. Every single one of us. It's not enough that we're getting together in Achtos. The Rambam is telling us, don't just say, it happened over there, it has no effect on me. Because that's cruel, you're being cruel to yourself, because the service is going to continue happening. Now watch what the Or HaChaim HaKadosh says, you will not believe it. The Or HaChaim says, what does it mean, carry? What does it mean that Hashem acts in a casual way? And he says, in days gone by, when somebody had a punishment, something bad happened to him, he would try to think, why did I deserve this? Something that I must have done, I could figure out, midah, connected midah. Measure for measure, it probably has some relationship to what I did. I'll give you a small example. A couple of years ago, I was going to Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky to ask him a shayla, and somebody knew that I was going. And that person was suffering from a terrible stomach illness. And they asked me, if you're going to Rabbi Yaakov, could you please get a brocha that, I should, that he, that person should be well and that they wouldn't need an operation. So I asked Rabbi Yaakov for a brocha. And then I asked them, what does the Rosh Hashiva say? Why does a person have stomach illnesses? He says, today we can be sure but if you ask me, he says, the midah, connected midah, is that person should be more careful and cautious. Wow, who would have thought of that? Because that person is having a stomach ailment, that means they're taking perhaps something into their stomach that's not the highest level of cautious. And maybe that's why it's happening. So we see how a god of things, midah, connected midah. But zog the heilig arachayim, whose yard side is next week, the Arachayim says, you know what it means, casual? That things are going to happen to Klal Yisrael and they will not be able to figure out why it happened. That's the worst. Because what are you supposed to do? At least when something happens and you can figure out, Mida connected Mida, why did somebody insult me? Because I insulted somebody else. Okay, you can figure it out. So you're going to stop insulting people because you see you got insulted. But casual means... Hashem says, I'm just going to give you a punishment. You're going to suffer, but you'll have no idea how you're going to figure it out. And you know what the punishment is? You will not believe this. You can look it up. Arachayim, Bayikra, Chavav, Pasik, Chav Gimel, Visegira, Biyad, Ha'oyev. You're going to be captured among your enemies. You're going to be kidnapped. Did you believe that? The Arachayim is telling us that when something like this happens, we have no idea. And that's part of the problem. How in the world are you going to figure out what we're supposed to do? 
According to the Rambam, every one of us tonight should change, and you will see you will change. Because I'm going to show you how every one of us can change. How this is Negea to every single one of us. What, is it a guarantee that I'm right? Of course not. Rab Arya Finkel, if you have a schus, if he's still in Lakewood, I don't know if he went back to America, he just came to America for the first time. He is a Malach Elikim, I've never seen such a beautiful, holy, saintly person. I love that man. Every time I go to Eretz Yisrael, I go to see him. Rab Arya Finkel said in Lakewood last week, he said every morning, Three times a day we daven. Hashiva shavteinu kvarishayna. Hashem return the judges as they once were. V'yayaseinu and those who give us advice kvatsila like it used to be. As Rabbi Yael said, if you had a Yimri or Hanavi, he could define for us what's wrong, why it happened, and what we're supposed to do. But we're only guessing. We're only pulling at straws. But we have no choice. We have to try to figure it out. We can't let this go on. So we have to try to figure out how can we make sense of this and how can we change and how can we do as the Rambam says. Not chas v'sholem, to be absurdian, but to make sure that it affects us and that we change because of it. So I want to say the first thing. The first thing which is almost obvious but I believe in every single thing that I will mention tonight, every one of us, is, if, if it's possible, should take a certain zehirus, a certain elevation in the thing that we will discuss. And here's the first one. A posik in Mishlei, Perik Yud, Posik Beis. Utstaka Tatsil Mimavas. It doesn't get any more open than that. What are we worried about? I don't even want to say it out of my mouth. Every one of us tonight must make a Zahiros, must make a commitment that we're going to give Tzedakah, but I want to show you how to give Tzedakah in an elevated way. Not just I'm giving to an organization, which is good. Whether it's chickens for Shabbos, whether it's Chazak, whether it's Orachayim, whether it's Ferris Moshe, they're all wonderful. But I want to tell you a story. The story happened with the Kapishin to Rebbe. Rabbi Lipa Gelworth told me the story. The Capitian Rebbe once came to the Diamond District on 47th Street and he knocks on the door and the lady, the secretary, she knows that her boss is a Capitian to she, she sees a picture in, in the guy's room in his office and she can't believe the Rebbe is standing there. And he says, could I speak to this and this fellow? Let's call him Rabbi Zev. So she says, one second, and she calls on the private telephone. She says, your Rebbe is here. I can't believe it. He's here. He wants to see you. Now, he knew that she knew what the Rebbe looked like. He runs out and he says, Wait, Rebbe, Rebbe, why did you come here? If you wanted me, I would come to you. The Tavishan said, Rebbe said, no, I need you today. So therefore, I came to you. That's the proper decorum. Oh, you Rebbe, I feel so bad. You slept all the way from Borough Park to come to Manhattan. The Rebbe says, don't worry, the trip was okay. I told you, I need you, so I came to you. Rebbe, please come in. He lets the Rebbe sit down. He doesn't sit down until the Rebbe sits down. And he says, Rebbe, tell me, what can I do for you? Anything, tell me. The Rebbe says, there's a family. The father is very sick. The mother has to be home to help with the children. They need money for food on the table. They're in desperate situations. I need money from them, for them. And the fellow says, Rebbe, tell me, whatever you want, I'll give you. For that, I could have come to you in shul. I could have given it to you. I told you, I'm coming to you. And I can't tell you how much stuff to give. That's your own decision. Whatever you decide. Rebbe, can I make out a check? Whatever you want. He says, Rebbe, who should I make out the check to? The Rebbe stops for a moment and says, make it out to your brother. The man almost polished. Why did the Rebbe make that trip? You know why? Because he wanted to show him what I want to show you tonight. There are many people in this room that will give tremendous amounts of stucca, but don't think of their own families. 
Think about it. Do you have a brother who's trying to send a child to camp and can't afford it? Do you have a sister who can't pay tuition? You will never get a plaque and you will never get written up in the Jewish link because you gave your sister money or because you gave your family money. But we all know that our brothers and sisters are suffering. Not everybody can make the money you make, even in your own family. And there's the heroes that we have to make of Stalker, Tatsum, and Mothers tonight is to make a commitment to somebody in your family. Because you know very well they need it. For camp, to marry off a child, to pay for tuition. There is no glory in giving to your brother or sister. Most of the time they'll have a tiny you didn't give enough. But that doesn't make a difference. It's between you and Hashem what you're doing. And that's the Zahiras tonight. The Zahiras tonight is to give Tzedakah in Tzchus of Gilad, Naftali and Ayal in a way that you're not going to get recognition except by Kodesh Baruch Hu. You're going to give Tzedakah where you get no glory for it. That's the first thing that I believe that we have to do tonight. I want to tell you a story. It's unbelievable. This week is the anniversary of this story. And most of us are old enough to remember. July 4th, 1976. Remember what happened July 4th, 1976? Besides the bicentennial? And Tebe, you're right. A plane was hijacked out of Eretz Yisrael. And that insane leader, Idi Amin, was the head of Uganda who had killed tens of thousands of his own countrymen and he threatened to blow up the plane that was in Tebe Airport. Everybody in Eretz Yisrael was tense. Everybody knew somebody who knew somebody that was on that plane. And they called the Yom Tefillah. The Yom Tefillah was going to be in the Mir Yeshiva. At that time, Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, the Rosh Yeshiva, was an older person. He had an apartment right across from the Beis Medrash. When you walked out of the Beis Medrash, there's a little hallway. He had a little apartment there. And they asked him to lead the Tillam. The place was packed as this place is packed tonight. He walked in through the back and he was so stunned by the crowd and the tenseness in the Beis Medrash that he was so overwhelmed he just sat down and he started crying. Everybody waited for the Rosh Hashiva to stop crying. He got up, he walked down the center aisle, he walked up, he kissed the Arkadish, he turned around to everyone again, he looked out at everyone and he saw the tenseness in their faces, the fear and the fright and again he started crying. Now I have a dear friend, his name is Moish Zucker, many of you know him, he's a wonderful Machanach and Ezra Academy. He was in the Beis Medrash that day. He told me the Rosh Hashiva said one sentence, one sentence he said and the tiller was so strong that he said all these years later he still gets the chills when he thinks of that tillum. You know what he said? He said, Davin, as if it's your father or your mother or your brother or your sister who's on that plane. That's how you have to Davin. And tonight, I say to every single one of you, imagine it was your son that was one of those three. Think about it for a second. Imagine, close your eyes and think it was your grandson. That's either Naftali, Gilad, or Ayal. You know something? I'll tell you what you would be thinking about. You wouldn't be thinking about the Achas and Klai Yisrael. That's not what you're thinking about. Are they feeding my son? Is he eating? Are they starving him? Is he sleeping on a mattress? Is he able to put on tefillin? Did they separate all three guys in different places and he has no idea where the other guys are? Or if they're even alive? Does he ever think of his parents? Think if it was your son. That's how we have to dive him later when we'd say till him. And I think that if you think and think about the possibility, chas v'shalom, that it was your son, oh, we would have a totally different attitude of what is really important. Of course it's important that everybody should daven. But I believe all those things that they cannot do and we are fortunate to do, we have a chayv kodesh to elevate our observance in these things and in that chus, hopefully they'll be saved. 
Let me give you an example. Food. Do you ever think about what kind of food they're eating? They're not giving him food with the OU on it, I guarantee you. Halal meat, maybe. They can't observe kashras, but we can. So if we are fortunate to be able to observe kashras, maybe we should observe it a notch higher. A notch higher. So it should be a schus for those kids who surely are not being given kosher food. What do I mean by a notch higher? You know, we know that there are many, many great Tashgachas, no question. And the four main ones, of course, in America, the OU, the Kof K, the OK, and the Star K. But you know, I went on Google, because I was just on a plane to Los Angeles, Erev Shabbos, and I was on United Airlines, and they didn't have the kosher meal, which sometimes is a blessing in itself, right? You know what some of these kosher meals taste like. So my wife and I said, do you have a kosher snack pack? So they said, yeah, that we have, well, that we can give you. So we took it out, we tried to see if you can see the OU, the OK, or whatever. And then we saw Hashgocha that we never saw before. It had a K, and it had the outline of a state. Now, it wasn't Texas, because everybody knows what Texas looks like. And it wasn't California, because we know what California looks like. So me and my wife had a debate, which state is this K in? Now, of course she was right. I looked it up today, and of course she was right. But we didn't eat it. Just because, you know, there are 60, go on Google, you'll see, 60 different kosher organizations. Many of us are going to be traveling this summer. If you don't know the rug behind it, you shouldn't eat it. I don't care if it's got a cup with payas on it. That's not what's important. If you don't know the rug, whether it's Texas, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Chicago, they're all wonderful people, I'm sure. But if you don't know that, then we don't eat it. And you may starve for an hour. Wow, isn't that terrible? And you're going to go without a snack pack until you get to California. But the idea is maybe, maybe, because these three Tadikim cannot observe Kashras. It's our Chayv Kodesh to observe Kashras in a higher level than we ever did before. I guarantee you they cannot say brachas out loud so that somebody should answer Amen. So I want to tell you a great story. You know, many years ago, there was a young woman in her early 40s. Her husband was very sick and he needed an operation. And the doctor said, I cannot decide whether your husband should have this operation because there is a chance that he'll die on the table. We've got to go to a higher authority. Now what he meant was that they should go to a higher professor, a different doctor in a different hospital. She didn't think that was the higher authority she was going to go to. She decided to go to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. So the doctor calls her, he said, did you make a decision who you want to go to? She said, yes. So he says, who is the doctor? She says, well, it's not a doctor, it's a rabbi. He said, I don't believe this. Your rabbi is going to tell me whether I should do a surgical procedure that I'm afraid of because he may die on the table? I got to see this. Do you mind if I come with you? She said, no, you could come. So, now this husband of this woman had learned in Tferes Yishalayim many, many years ago. That's why she felt a closeness to Rabbi Moshe, although he had no shyness with Rabbi Moshe over the years. So the woman, her father, and the doctor went. And all of a sudden, when the woman came in, and she started talking to Rabbi Moshe, and she started telling him the story of what's happening and how the doctor doesn't want to make a decision. And Rabbi Moshe gave great cover to the doctor and asked him many, many questions and treated him with great, great derech And finally, the woman said, Rosh Hashiva, I don't know if the Rosh Hashiva remembers my husband, but I want to show you a picture of what he looked like. When he was 20 years old, when he was in Tveris Yushalayim, Rabbi Moshe said, please, let me see the picture. Let me see if I recognize him. And he took a look, and he recognized him. And he started crying. Rabbi Moshe started crying. So the doctor turns to the lady and she says, now I know why he can make the decision. Listen to what Rabbi Moshe said. It'll change us forever. Rabbi Moshe said, let him have the operation. However, 
He should make a Kabbalah. And this is the Kabbalah that I say to all of us tonight. Because those boys, Naftali, Ayal, and Gilad, cannot break brachas out loud. We should make brachas out loud. You know what Ramesha said? From now on, he should make a Kabbalah that every bracha that he says out loud, he should make sure another person says Amen. And people that are going to make brachas in his presence, they should say it out loud. And he should say Amen. You know why? You can't believe that Rabbi Moshe would say this. It sounds like a Hasidic Rebbe talking. He says because Amen is Begamatria 91. And the word Malach, Mem, Lamed, Aleph, Chof is also equal 91. And every time you say Amen, a new Malach is created. And these Malachim are going to protect your husband. And he had the operation and he lived for six years. Imagine, tonight, how many people do we have there? Close to 500 people it looks like? Imagine if all of us make a kapala. From now on, we're going to say brachas out loud. So that people should say amen. We should say amen. Every amen creates a malach and it will protect those kids. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that showing the Rambam that this affects us? Because they can't make brachas out loud. So tonight, we're going to make a kapala that we're going to say brachas out loud and not be embarrassed. We ask our kids to do it, but somehow we're embarrassed. But if you do it, and you say Amen to somebody else's bracha, and you have somebody say Amen to your bracha, that's what Rabbi is talking about. We'll create thousands of malachim. And Be'ezus Hashem, they'll protect those boys so that nothing wrong should happen to them. Can they put on tefillin? Do you ever think about that? If it was your son, you would think about that. Where I was tefillin. These kids were going home for Shabbos. Obviously they took their tefillin, they were going to dive on Sunday morning, and then take a bus back, or hitchhike back, whatever. What happened to their tefillin? Maybe, because they surely are not letting them put on tefillin. Maybe we need a bigger Zahiris and tefillin. And every time we do this Zahiris and tefillin, have them in mind. And then hopefully they'll be able to come out and put on tefillin again. I want to tell you an amazing story. An amazing story about the Orach Chaim HaKadosh again. This is your type this next week, Tezvav Tamas. Listen to this. The Square Rebbe tells this story to every Bar Mitzvah boy in Square when he comes in to get a bracha the first time he's putting on tefillin. The Orach Chaim HaKadosh was married two times. His first wife never had no children. The second wife had a number of daughters. He never had a son. And when he was 47 years old, he got very sick. And he realized that he was going to pass away, as his wife realized that he was going to pass away. And she said to him, how could you leave me? I'm so destitute. We have no money. How could you do this? And he said to her, listen to me. He says, I know that I, I'm going to leave this world. But I have a pair of tefillin. And within a month, there's a person that's going to come from Turkey. And he will want to buy this fill and you could sell it for any amount of money that you want. He will give you anything that you want. But you cannot sell it to him unless you tell him. He can only buy it on this condition that he will never talk Dvorim B'Telem when he's wearing these tefillin. If he agrees never to talk out while he's wearing these tefillin, Except if he has to say a posik or divrei teira or davening, then you could tell him the tefillin. And a few days later he passed away. And Taka, in a month, less than a month, a man from Constantinople came and said, I heard that the great Tzaddik passed away, I would like to buy his tefillin. She couldn't believe this. Mamisha Navua. And she says, my husband told me that somebody like you would come. I can only give it to you on one condition. That you promise never to talk out anything of Dvarim B'Telim while you're wearing these tefillin. He said, I promise, and she sold it to him for a fortune of money. The next morning, the man put on the tefillin. He was like in a different world. All of us have had this feeling. Sometimes you daven Shemineshra and it's a gate, it's a fleece that's unbelievable. Sometimes you just feel that connection. And you know that the tefillas are going to be answered. You feel so wonderful. Happens many times when you're at Kei Rochal or by the Rebbe Rebbe Limelech. There's certain places or the Kaisel, you just feel so connected. And that's how he felt for days and days and days. He never spoke out when he was wearing these tefillin. One morning, as he's wearing this tefillin, a young worker from his place comes in and says, Boss, 
There's an emergency in the office. You've got to tell me what to do. And he's trying to look away from this kid. He doesn't want to talk out with the tefillin. And the kid is frantic. He doesn't understand the importance of tefillin. And he says, I'm telling you, there's a terrible emergency. Please, you've got to tell me what to do. So he figures, I'll just tell him quickly what to do, and then he'll go back to davening. Because he's got to get rid of this kid, because he just couldn't push him away. He told him what to do. He looked back in his sitter, and it wasn't the same. He was devastated. He couldn't believe it. Why did he do such a stupid thing? And talk to this child. Talk to this young worker. He figured, okay, tomorrow morning I'll put on the tefillin. It's a brand new day. It'll go back to the way it was. And it wasn't the same. He was just in a panic. And the story goes, he went to the cipher that afternoon. And he told him the whole story. And the cipher said, let me open up the parshas. And they opened up the parshas and they were clear white. All the letters had gone. The Skvera Rebbe tells this story to every Bar Mitzvah Bacher. You know what it tells us in Shulchan Aruch? It tells us in Shulchan Aruch. The Mishnah Bura writes, Mitzvah min amufchar. This is in Mem Dalad, Sif Aleph, Sif Kotten, Beis. Mitzvah min amufchar she heidato yitomid ala tefillin. When you're wearing tefillin, you should be thinking about the tefillin. Certainly, Shalai Yasiyah Data Lim Shaykh Allah Hara Makshavi Sroyce, you shouldn't be thinking about the World Cup. And you gotta be crazy to think about the Mets anyway, so nobody's thinking about the Mets. But you know, even the Yankees once in a while they win these days. And you can't be thinking about your family and about your business deals. That's you shouldn't be thinking anything when you're wearing your tefillin. So maybe if that's the case, I can't say that from now on. Tonight, every man should make a Kabbalah, a Zahiris, and Tefillin that you shouldn't talk while you're wearing your Tefillin. That would be wonderful. But let's make up! We won't text while you're wearing Tefillin. How crazy have we become? All of you know that I'm a Moyo. So when I dive in, in the shul where there's a bris in the morning, so I say, Bechore Simei Abris, and, you know, he responds with the Psukim, and we go through it, and the Yekat Shoshos, you go through all the way, Oz Yashir. But at least, Tilvayosha, you will not believe. I'm not going to tell you what shul, because it just would be too insulting. I come up to say, and the, and the Baltfila, he's texting. I, I, I couldn't be mopsy, but I was going to say, who are you texting, God? <laughs> How can you be texting your Baltfila, for God's sakes? We've got to make up tonight. Ten years ago or twelve years ago, before we had iPhones, somehow we were able to live without texting for 25 minutes. The Zahiras that we have to take for those boys who can't put on filling anymore is that we're going to make up from tomorrow on. We will shut the phones, not answer them, but not even read email. Did you believe that? What an assignment. But when you think about it, it's ridiculous what has become of us. No texting, chas v'sholem, from now on, with tefillin. Here's another thing. There's a fascinating Gemara in the Sechta Megillah. The, Mag- the Gemara tells us that 28, you can count them, 28 different Tanoim were asked the same question. Bama harachta yomim. How did you live long? Everybody wants to live long. We want these kids to live long too. So, you know what's very interesting? The answers of all the 28 people, they each said, they started out, me on my, all my days, the first one said, I never made a shortcut from the shul. If I had to go from 150th Street to Rabbi Schoenfeld's house, I didn't cut through the shul and go out the back way. But I walked around, I didn't make a shortcut in the shul. Another one said, Nobody ever came to show before I did. I always came first. And it goes on and on. Everyone says, All my days I always did this. I never got angry in my house. Everybody said different things. 28 different things. So I remember when I was learning the Gemara, I was trying to think, Okay, I also want to live long. What should I do? 28 different things? How do you pick out what to do? So I remember I was in Tells. I didn't learn in Tells, but I happened to be in Tells one afternoon. And one of the Rosh Hashim is there, Rabbi Cheskel Monk, showed me a Nitziv that's out of this world. The Nitziv is in Pasha Shlach, in the Pasha of Tzitzis. 
And he brings this Gemara. And he says like this. What was the common denominator of all these 28 people? Every one of them said, Miyamai, all my days. Consistency. And he brings here Shalmi. Anybody who wants to live long should undertake a certain Zahirus. And once you undertake it, never stop. Never. And that's what Rabbi Yudah Chassid said. It's amazing. Look up this Rabbi Yudah Chassid Simon Ratio Simon 210. If you see a Talmud Chacham that's living long, Shahoysif Dikdukam Achaveri, he does something a little bit more than his friends, and it's not written in the Torah. It doesn't say in the Torah you've got to be the first one in shul every day. It doesn't say in the Torah that you can't make a shortcut out of the shul. It doesn't say in the Torah not to get angry in your house. He says these are things written in the Sechta Megillah, not in the Torah, but they are Zahiras. They are wonderful things, and you keep it up consistently. I remember I had the great schos to speak at Rav Scheinberg's 100th birthday dinner. Now, we all know that Rav Scheinberg wore many, many pairs of tzitzis. Some say 60, some say 80. It's not important. But I said, I'll bet that that's why he lived long. You know why? It can't be a derisa. If it would have been a derisa, Rabbi Schoenfeld would wear 80 pairs of tzitzis. Right? Because he tries to do everything that's derisa. So, it couldn't be a derisa. Rabbi Yosef didn't do it. Rabbi Shlomo Zalman didn't do it. He had his Zahiras. But he did it, and he never stopped. And tonight, if we want to live long, and we want those kids to live long. I believe we have to make a Kabbalah. Make a Kabbalah. It doesn't have to be something from the Torah. A simple thing. I'll give you some examples, but you can make up your own. It doesn't make a difference. But whatever you start to do tonight or tomorrow, never stop for the rest of your life. That's me, oh my. You know, I'll give you an example. Bench in a sitter. It doesn't say any place in the Torah you should bench in a sitter. But there are people that wouldn't even say Allah Mikhtir outside a sitter. Rav Segal never benched outside a sitter. And the truth is, how many of us know Yala Yovai by heart? Or let's say on Shabbos by heart? Or even, you know, after Al Yechasreinu. Not going to count, I'm not going to ask anybody how many Arachmans there are. It's a whole bunch of them, right? We get most of them, right? When you're dabbling by heart. You know? Maybe, make up from tonight, Miyomai. From now on, all my days, I will bench in a sitter. It should be a schus for myself and a schus for those kids. Because they certainly can't bench in a sitter now. How about something else? Doing a chesed every day. I've been speaking about this for years. Every one of us should have a little notebook that you write down a chesed that you do every single day. It doesn't have to be the same one. It doesn't have to be a major thing. Call somebody in a nursing home. Take somebody in carpool. Give somebody a ride home. Something. You do something small. And when you do something small, you write it down. I guarantee you that your life will change. You know why? It's not me. Hashem Tzilcha. Dabra Melo says, God is your shadow. You do for others, Hashem is going to do for you. But once you start it, keep that notebook. I was in Los Angeles this past Shabbos. So a woman tells me that she heard me talk about it seven years ago in Toronto. She said, I kept it for seven years till the night before I got married. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> she got busy. I don't know what the problem was. But okay. But I told her she should start it again. She's got four little girls now. But, um, but the idea is, all of a sudden you feel special. You're not living for yourself. And so maybe that's what we should be doing. I just want to add one more thing, we'll review, and then end with a great, great, great thought. Everybody who has seen anything, whether it's on YouTube or on any of the newsletters, newspapers, the Yiddish newspapers, were all so moved by those three holy women. Rachel Frankel, Badgalim Sheer, and Iris Yifrach, the mothers of these children. Their emuna is out of this world. Their dignity, their nobility is a lesson for all of us. They could be yelling and screaming and crying and who knows what they're doing in private. But to the world, they're thanking the soldiers. They're thanking Klal Yisrael. You know, I get the chills when I think about them because I want to share with you something, especially for the women. It always bothered me in Eishas Chaya 
You know, if I asked you to draw a picture of a Jewish woman, many would draw a woman benching lift Friday night. That's the typical Yiddish picture. How come it doesn't say anything in Asia's Chayel about a woman benching lift? It's one of the primary mitzvahs, right? But I believe there is something that's mentioned. We all know that Asia's Chayel is with the Aleph base. So in the Pasik Tov, Tet rather, it says, Toama ki Sahra, she senses that her enterprise is good, La Yichbe Balaila Neira. Her candle doesn't go out at night. The simple meaning is that she's diligent and the good woman works till late at night to make sure that the house and the business is fine. That's a simple meaning. I believe there's a deeper meaning as well. Lila means when things are difficult. Lila means when things are dark. You know what the great woman is? The great woman in Kalal Yisrael is the one who keeps the spirit up in the house. How many men told me that during Sandy, without their women, without their wives, they would have been finished. Because it was the woman who said, don't worry, I know you lost your svarim, and we lost the bookcases, and we lost the couches. But we're here. Nobody lost their lives. We're going to make it. We're going to come through it. And the men, so many men said, if not for my wife, I would have been finished. The whole family would have been finished. And that's a lesson that we can learn from these three Sidkaniyasin. The nobility the pride, the amuna, the upbeat attitude, la yichpe balayla neira, every woman should know that. The awesome, awesome responsibility that you have in a Yiddish house. So let's review everything that we said and we'll end with a great thought and, they say, and then say till them like it's supposed to be said. Let's remember, we cry out to Hashem with all kinds of sukkim. From tomorrow morning, let's remember, underline the bracha, Matir Asurim, so it'll have a new meaning. Not only Matir Asurim, that you are now released, that you can walk and move and talk. That's a simple meaning. The deeper meaning is that these captives, and any other Yidden, any place, wherever they may be, in Syria, Iraq, Iran, there's got to be Yidden in all these places. Matir Asurim, that the Abisha, in his kindness, should free those that are tied. Let's remember the Achtos. There's no question that the Achtos is important. And it's so important that we should remember even after this incident ends, Latoyev. We should keep the Achtos. It's imperative for all. However, what I believe is more important is what the Rambam is telling us. Let's not be cruel to ourselves. If every one of us came in tonight because we feel pain, Hashem is talking to us. He wants us to change. And if a person doesn't feel that, then the Rambam says, you're being cruel to yourself. He calls it axorious. Because that happened so that we should feel pain and we should wake up. And we should think about what we're supposed to do. And the Orachayim HaKadosh who tells us, it's unbelievable, that today the Hastara Sponim, the hidden face of Hashem, is that you can't even figure out the Mida Keneged Mida. And he uses that expression, Segura Biyad Oyev, being locked up by the enemy, being kidnapped. And so if that's the case, we know stop at Tatsal Mimovas. Let's all tonight make a commitment that we're going to give money where we don't get a lot of credit. To our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, for camp, shiduchim, tuition. That's the right thing to do. That's why the commissioner came and told that fellow to write the check to his brother. Let's remember what Abraham Shmuelevitz told us. Davin as if it was your father, or your mother, or your brother, or your sister on that plane. Daven tonight, as if it was Chas V'Shalom, your child, or your grandchild, that was either Naftali, Gilad, or Ayal. Let's think about what they can't do, or what we can do. And maybe we have the Achrayas to elevate it. To elevate our standards of Kashras, not to just rely on a symbol that you don't really know where it comes from. To make brachas out loud so that people should say Amen and you should say Amen. Because as Rabbi Moshe taught us, Amen is equal 91 and Malach is equal 91. Let's create thousands of Malachim that will hopefully protect those children. Let's remember a Zahiris and Tfilin, Chas Shalom, not to ever, ever read an email or text while you're wearing your Tfilin. If you can avoid talking about some other things, that's also good. It's a, certainly as a hero, there's no question. 
And that's why we don't wear tefillin all day. That's what the Mishnah Bura says, because after all, we do have to talk secular things, and that's understandable. But at least, not to lower ourselves, let us make a Kabbalah that we're going to have that Zahiras and tefillin. Let us make a Kabbalah that we're going to undertake something. It doesn't have to be a derisa, but some Zahira, something special. Davening in a sitter, doing a chesed every day, miyomai. That's why they all, those 28, lived long. Because they were consistent, just like Rav Scheinberg, who wore those extra pair of tzitzis from when he was a young man until he passed away over a hundred years old. And finally, let's remember that the women, they should learn from these women. Noble, pristine, ma'aminim, b'nei ma'aminim, wonderful, wonderful people whose spirit is up even in the darkest of times. La balayla neira. I just want to end with this thing. The Chavetz Chaim tells us something amazing. The Pasek tells us in Matos, Bamid Balamed Aleph, Pasek Ches, Vezbilam ben Ba'ar, Hargu Becherev. Bilam was finally killed by Jews, he was killed by the sword. Rashi, in a sense, asked the question, who cares? Why does the Torah have to tell us that he was killed by sword? Does it really make a difference? Do we learn anything from it? And Rashi says, yeah, we do learn something from it. You know why? Because he took our weapons and tried to beat us with our weapons. Our weapon is the mouth. He tried to curse us. The strength of the Yid is his mouth. The Torah that he learns and the Tefillah that he davens. So because he tried to use our weapon, Hashem said to Klai Yisrael, you know something? Get rid of him with his weapon. His weapon, the Goy's weapon, is the Chorav, is the sword. If that's the case, Zok the Heilig Chavetz Chaim. Imagine that you have a pristine lake, a beautiful lake with very clear water, and now you want to get the water to the community, so everybody should have clear, delicious water. But the pipes are filthy. The pipes are decayed. The pipes are dirty. So what's going to happen? It could be the cleanest lake. But if you've got to put them through those pipes, by the time the community gets them, the water is defective. The water is soiled. It's not drinkable. So the Chavot Chaim. Torah is pure. Tefillah is pure. We've got to get it up to Shemayim. What is the pipe? The pipe is our mouth. If we say something that's off color, if we say something that's painful to a spouse, to a child, to a co-worker, if we speak Lush and Hara, we speak rechilas, or we act in a way of anger or cause machlekes with this tool. That's the defective, dirty pipe. The words can't get up there in the pristine way to Shemayim. So tonight, the final Kabbalah that we have to make, as we're going to say two kapitlach tilim together, is that we're going to make sure that our pipe, our mouth is pure. We have to begin being a little bit more careful in how we speak and what we speak. Because it's hurting us it's hurting us, says the Chavetz Chaim. The Torah is pure, it can help us. The Tefillah are pure, the Tefillahs are pure, they can help us. But they can't help us if you've got a dirty pipe, just like the dirty pipe can't bring the water to the community. So let's all stand. We're going to say these two kapitlachs together. We'll say them with feeling, and hopefully we'll be zoicha to hear the wonderful news in Eretz Yisrael. I took it from my hand. You're saying it to him? Yeah. Um, I mean, hold it one second. I'm going to say that Mishra Barak is a special listener to Mishra Barak for these days. And then I'm going to make Mishra Barak a special listener. And then you're going to sing, I think. Yeah. yeah. But just get it. We're saying the second and the third. Shir Hamalois, Mimamakim, Korosich Adainoi. Adainoi, Shima Bekaili. Tienos neha kashu voice, the core of Tahanunoi. In my voice, is Tish Maria Adainoi me yamoi. Ki <laughs> <laughs>
Vici Adaina Ikifs on Avshi Vilid Varoi Hoi Halti Nafshi Ladaina Vishoim Nim Laboiker Shoim Nim Laboiker Yachel Yisrael El Adonai Kim Adonai Achesed V'harbei Nimoi Fedos V'hu Yifdesh Yisrael Mikoel Avonai Sof Maskil David, be a soy bamoro sefila. Koili eladinoi ezok, koili eladinoi eschanon. Shpoich lefon of sikhi, tzoro si lefon of agid. Vesateif olay ruchi, vato yodat anesi voisi, v'oi rechzu aleich tomnu pachli. Yomin rei v'yein li makir Ovad monois mimeni Ein doireish l'navshi Zohakti eilecho adoinoi Omarti atomachzi חלקי בירץ החיים. הקשיבו אל רינוסי, כי דלוי סימיוית, הצילי נמירוי דפי, כי אמצו ממני. Tzio mimas ger nafshi Lo hoi dois eshem echa Bi achtiru tzadikim Tisig moel oloi We'll now be saying a nusach for the for the three kidnapped boys special nusuf that was composed recently and that will be followed by Tfilah uh, Patsahal well, they need a lot of Tfilah so they should be successful in their mission following that uh, Rabbi Kron will lead us in the singing of Achenu Kovais Yisrael and then uh, those who need to daven Marav we will be davening Marav here Mishaberach Avosin Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov Yosef Moshe Aaron David Shlomo Yevar Yishma Yitzar Esachena Anusun Matzor Uvashivya Yilad Michal Ben Vaskalim Yaakov Naftali Ben Rachel Ayal Ben Iris Teshuvah. Okay, I'm missing here. Okay. Okay, take the correction, not, it's not in this uh, clearly, but okay. Yaakov ben, Yaakov Nachtali ben Rachel Devora, and Ayal ben Iris Teshura. Ba'avur she'kol ha'kohol m'spal ba'avurom, ha'kadosh baruchu y'malei rachim aleihem. Yotziyem ha'choshech v'vitzah moves, u'mos roseim y'nateh. M'utzukoseim y'oshiyem 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 y יקיים בהם מקרא שפסוק ודיע אדוני ישובון ובואו ציון ברינה ושמחה סלום על ראשם ששון ושמחה יעשיגו 
Pranasu Yagam Anaha Vanamar Amen. Mishibera Hagosen of Ramitsa Piyaka, we were at S. High Lakes for Hagadal Israel. Hamdim Hamishmar and Sen of Aurela Hino. Make Bulham Vanam, the Abid Man Mitzrayim, the Minion, Hayam Hagadal, Adabo Haraba, by Vasha, by Avir Vayam. He tain our names, I vain our common lady of Finnish Nehem. Hakadosh for who you smart the Axilis, I allayed the Mikolsa, the Tsuka, Mikol Nega Mahala. Yishlach Rocha the Axla Bohoma, I say to him, Yankos and Medera Hanahona. Yabes and Inu Tartem, the Atra Bekes, the Shiva Thirsty Sahon, the Kayamahana Kosu, Ki Adonai, the Hem, Alech and the Hem, the Hem, the Hem, Imo the Hem, the Shia Hem, the Lamar, Amen. Ah, hey, no, call base Israel. Ah, hey, no, call base Israel. And it's soon in Batsara, Batsara, Batsibia. I'm in vain by Obeying by Yahusha, Achenu Kol Beis Yisroel, Achenu Kol Beis Yisroel, Anesunim Batzara, Batzara Hu Bashivya. Noim dim bein bayom, o bein bayabosho. Amo koim yirachim, yirachim alem, v'yaitiyem mitzara lehilevacha. Be'afeil aliyoyro, v'shibud lege olashto, v'agolo v'zeman korib. Amokoim yirachim, yirachim, aleyem v'yaitziyem v'zara v'hilevacha. May I fail on the oil, we shibut, lege ulashto, bagolo, vizamane kori. Once again, I want to take the opportunity to thank Rabbi Schoenfeld Sr., Rabbi Yoel Schoenfeld, Yaniv, Meirov, and Rabbi Newman. Hashem should bench all of us that we should be zoicha to hear good news in the future from Naftali, Yigal, Gilad, and Ayal. We should hear only the Surah's Tavis. Everybody get home safely. Amen.